Oh, hi, Jean. Hi, Tyler. Why do you have a string tied around your finger? Oh, uh, I can't remember. Is it because Pi Day is coming up? That's probably it, yeah. We have a whole day to celebrate Pi. Can you tell me what's so special about Pi? Can I tell you what's so special about Pi? Yes. Actually, I can use this string to draw a circle on the board. The point at the center is called the center, and the distance from any point on the circle is always the length of the string, and it has a special name. It's called the radius of the circle. The radius is about half the circle, and the distance all the way across the circle is called the diameter. The diameter is always twice the radius, and if I use the letter r for radius and d for diameter, I could write that d is equal to 2 times r, twice as much. Okay, pretend like this is the satellite image of a running track, and we know the diameter is one mile all the way across. How far is someone going to run if they run around the track? The length around a circle is called the circumference. You can always figure out the circumference by knowing the radius or the diameter. I'll tell you how in a moment. I've drawn four squares here, each with a side equal to the radius. How many of these squares are covered by the circle, including partial squares? Here's another way to think about that last question. Here is a circular fishbowl. In the same way as before, I've drawn four squares around the circle. Now I build a fish tower using the same four squares. If I pour all the water from the fishbowl into the fish tower, how high will the water go? It turns out that the height of the water in the tower is the same as the number of squares covered by the circle. So you can think of this question either way. It has the same answer. Let's use some string to try to estimate the answer to the first problem. This string is about the diameter of this circle, and the other piece of string is the length of the circumference. If I unravel the circumference string and measure it against the diameter string, I see that it's a little more than three times as long. If this were a running track with a diameter of one mile, the track would be a little more than three miles around. To estimate the second question, I'm going to start with the same picture that I drew before, and I'm going to subdivide these squares into even smaller squares. Now I can notice that this big square here and this big square here is mostly inside the circle, and if I look at this half of a square and this half of a square together, then in total I have about three big squares fit inside the circle or are covered by the circle. Keep in mind that this is an approximation. It's not the exact answer, but it's probably pretty close. It turns out that the exact answer to both of these questions is the same number, and that number is about 3.141592653. And it turns out that if you want the exact answer, the decimal representation goes on forever, and it never repeats. So an abbreviation for this number is pi. If you want to write it in English, you can write pi, and this letter is the Greek letter that we use as an abbreviation for that number. The first letter of the Greek alphabet is alpha, then the letter beta, then the Greek letter gamma, then delta, then a few more letters, and finally we get to pi. Pi is the first letter of the Greek word perimetros, which in English means perimeter. Perimeter is the outside of a shape, so the circumference of a circle can also be called the perimeter. That's why we call this number pi, because it stands for perimetros. The decimal representation for pi is infinitely long, but we can take an approximation for that number and just look at the first two decimal digits, and we get 314. The date March 14th can also be written as 314, and that's why we call that day Pi Day. Yay!
Pi Day is also special because it's this guy's birthday. Albert Einstein was born on March 14th, Pi Day, 1879. Okay, now some people really like pi. They study something called pi philology, which is a hard word to say, and the point is to remember digits of pi. They come up with sentences like this one, how I wish I could recollect pi easily today. Okay, how does that help you remember pi? Okay, count the first, uh, the number of letters in the first word, three, and then the number of letters in the second word, one, number of letters in the third word is four, and if we keep on going, well, I think you can see the pattern. Let's take a closer look at how we know the circumference of a circle is pi times the diameter. This animation from Wikipedia shows a piece of red tape wrapped around a wheel, and the tape sticks to the ground as the wheel rolls. The length of the red tape is the circumference of the wheel, and you can see that it is pi times as long as the diameter since the diameter is used to mark off the blue lines. I can write this down as a formula. I'll use the letter C for the circumference, and that's going to be pi times the diameter. So if I know the diameter is 10 centimeters, for example, the circumference is going to be pi times that, about 31.4 centimeters. When finding the value of pi, measuring tools like string can only give a very rough approximation. It was thousands of years ago that mathematicians first tried to discover the value of pi. I'll show you some of the ideas from geometry that they used. If the diameter of a circle is equal to 1, using this formula, the circumference is pi times 1, which is exactly pi, and the radius is always half the diameter, so the radius is just 1 half. If I draw a hexagon inside the circle, then the perimeter of the hexagon is less than the circumference of the circle, which is pi here. I can split the hexagon into six equilateral triangles, and notice that every single side here is equal to the radius, which is one half. If I add up all the sides around the hexagon, the total is three. In other words, 3, the perimeter of the hexagon, is less than the circumference of the circle, which is pi. Now you already knew that 3 was less than pi, but for the ancient mathematicians studying this for the first time, this was a new fact, and they figured it out using this picture. If I draw a square around a circle with diameter 1, then each side of the square is length 1. And if I add up the sides here, I get 4, and clearly the square is outside the circle, so I can see that 4 is greater than the circumference, which is pi. So now I know that pi is greater than 3 and less than 4. The pictures I drew show that pi is between 3 and 4. Mathematicians started with ideas like this and used more and more complex pictures and ideas to find more precise values of pi. The area of a rectangle is the base times the height. We can use this formula to help find the area of a circle. First, draw a polygon with about the same area as the circle. I can open this into a line of triangles, make a copy, and fit these together to get a rectangle. Since there are two copies of the triangles here, the rectangle's area is about twice the circle's area. The base of the rectangle is about as long as the circumference of the circle, which is pi times d, which is pi times 2 times the radius. The height of the rectangle is the height of a single triangle, which is about the radius of the circle. So the area is about pi times 2 times r times r, and the area of the circle is half that, which gives pi r squared. Wow, pi is pretty cool. That's a lot of information. Can you go over the main facts? Sure, Jean. Let me review what we just learned. The point in the middle of the circle is called the center. Every point on the circle is the same distance away from the center, and that distance is the radius. If we go all the way across the circle, that is the diameter. The diameter is always twice the radius. And all the way around the circle is the circumference. The circumference is always equal to pi times the diameter. We also saw that the area of a circle is equal to pi times the radius squared. This video was made especially for the students at Roxborough and Garrity Schools. Happy Pi Day!